intuitive verses from an intellect of symposiums on living and our many projections. Written by Joseph Derek Dismore, Hillel Ben Sakar. Verse 1. Lift up thyself, vaunteth thyself to the heights of the heavens. Verse 2. Let not the onlookers of life give thee heed. Make speed hastily, for they consider and understand not. Verse 3. Wherein if the cities are not in fires of revolutions, are they stagnant, stagnant as waste pools? Verse 4. The people of the world unite. Let there not be dispersion to the wantonness of sloth. Verse 5. Resign thyself to the incalculable enumerations of bringing all things within thyself to pass into a continuation of completion. Verse 6. Cause to stir the great ocean, both inside thyself and as an expression of the people's and creatures around thee, for there is a time, and times, vast times, what flame shine forth may ignite the waters both above, below, around, within, and without. Verse 7. Discernment of the signs and seasons are but the dross fallen from the golden ephod. Cast forth thy will and draw in a multitude of accomplishments. Verse 8. Sing forth with loud mirth. Make loud the tinkering bell and cymbal. For the day is continuous into the night of opulence. The morning leads to the evening, so rejoice. If not for the destination or achieving of the goal, there is the ecstatic moment to moment wherein all things conspire. Verse 9. Throne gives way to dominions. Dominions to principalities. When the people bring forth their wills, then doth the kingdom change. Verse 10. Let none lead and another follow. Let none bring a light for another just as capable to bear light in the times when their sight should be past the inward shore. Verse 11. If any ask of thee a pledge, let them first bear forth the fruit of the enterprise and treat thee as an equal. For if any do not accept the commonality of the conditions, but live in dreams and carelessness, then let the earth receive them. There is no spokesman or spokesperson or spokeswoman for another's life. Let each person show forth in passions unbridled the way of themselves. Verse 12. As of an onlooker, cheering a life or death struggle, does a sluggard view their own coming into change. Those who shape that which is unknown to many, they are those who bring to pass their own will, calling forth from the vapors the presence of all times and spaces without discouragement to their purposes. Verse 13. In all ways no, uncertainty and possibility is wrought, brought the active realms into being. They exist out of the probable improbability, but their foundations lie deep in the hidden stone of the elixir. Verse 14. If the fabric of your life becomes unraveled and torn, worry thyself not. Get a thread and clothe and mend it. No one other than thyself knows your true colors. Verse 15. The fabrics and the thread of life are the multitude of experiences. Some strands are long, some shorter. They are tied together by the knots forming the coalescence of thy being. A vesture is a sleep and sheep made to cover the mystery of mysteries within thyself. Verse 16. The girth of the wind is not boisterous. The high winds are not destructive. Yet when obstacles and restrictions are placed before it, their foundations crumble. The world's winds of many plains only come to rest on the tops of mountains, and they who reside there 
are repositories of the meaning of the unchangeable and unchanneled. Verse 17, never go to war with a man or a nation unless you first gain entrance into the threshold of a single cell in their secret chambers. Verse 18, mankind is seems debt to those with ulterior motives. The greater debt one has is to themselves. Even the concentrated core of the universal cannot throw itself from its courses. Verse 19, a ship's navigator used a sextant to chart passage by the stars. As is the compass of our innermost nature, coupled with the firmament of heaven that guides ourselves to our secret essence. Verse 20, triangulation is not but a restriction, but restriction with the aim of growth ceases and causes the ecstasy of the primal motion. Verse 21, to be without is one free for contemplation. To live within is one free from illusion. Verse 22, any ant may have chambers of store prepared for the winter, yet a magpie flies freely about and easily avoids, avoids the rifle, and its colors mimic the snowy dark sky. Verse 23, it is the multitude of the chaotic voices of the Cacodamon united in one word of ecstasy to attain the genius of spirit. Verse 24, people mince words like gamblers mince dice, yet when there are no limitations and the characters are willing for any outcome, they shall be the victors. For regardless whatsoever or whichsoever way the score becomes, they shall have played willingly. Verse 25, seashores may seem like refuge from the waves. But the sandy sediment churns the waters to overlap and proceed beyond the edifices of society. Verse 26. Some say that there is the abyss and that it is full of illusions. I say there is no illusion, therefore no abyss. 27. Verse 27. If some see life through a dark cloudy glass, then they have not taken the time to clean the glass that they are looking through. Verse 28. The destruction of a castle falling through unto the foundation, some see as an end. A warrior sees the foundation has always been high enough to keep the lives of the warriors within. And from their level, they can defend against any assault. It is the leveling of the spire that the battlements are raised. Verse 29. Acknowledgement of the sacredly accursed only shows forth upon the pressing of the holy. As is a group of people stepping on sand spurs that bring forth the caution. Verse 30. Taking of a man who has been wise and then reached in the level of complete unintelligible obscurity. The only thing we can truly state of ourselves for the future is, I shall do that which I shall do, and I shall not do that which I do not do. Verse 31. Think not a special meaning to point within the circle, star within the circle, or rod. Yet think of the measures that cannot be meted out. Verse 32. A cow's udder torn by a rusty fence will poison the milk for the calves. Even as information of the masses is congealed and mixed with contradiction by editors through the use of censorship guided by despots. Verse 33. Is it that the fence post stands in the hole, or is it that the dirt that encircles the fence keeping it fixed in that lodging place? Verse 34. I sat atop a river once, exhausted from a nine-hour hike. I fell asleep on the rock, and then I fell off the rock and hit my face and head on the smaller rocks in the shallow stream. 
learned lesson. Rocks may be good for sitting on, but they're hard to use as a pillow. Verse 35. The wise and magi was asked by an observer, With thine great arcane knowledge, why did you not smite the detractors? The wise and magi spoke, Did you not see the, contain the continuum taking place in their future? Now you know the enemy of mankind, for they have even carried their sorrows onward. Verse 36. If a crop fails, do not beat the oxen. There are many other causations to consider. Verse 37. If a high one walks in the fields and brushes back the grass to sit, and looks and touches the fragile wild flower, once the high one is gone, the wild flower experiences loneliness because her peers, the grasses, were crushed at, their, at her touching. Verse 38. I fell asleep once by a freezing river. I got frozen to the ground underneath a tarp. And in the depths of darkness underneath, I saw nothingness. Several days passed. The water I gathered before from the mountain river in a clear container was cloudy upon coming awake to myself. Verse 39. If the lofty one forces a common person, then the palace is overthrown by Bethunes. Yet if a king chooses mate from the village, the whole village is raised in status. And it is the whore that has the key to the mysteries of the kingdom. Verse 40. To understand thine own divine nature, do not look at others' descriptions of you. Do not listen to words that are supposed to define and therefore set a limit upon you, but find the natures that has so knowing, and in this way you will discover your secret center. Verse 41, all birds, no matter how high they fly, must descend in order to obtain their substance. Verse 42, grass does not grow in squares. It flows outward from each individual blade until it reaches the sidewalk. This is as each person, when they become inflamed, both inward and outward, then, there's, then does the revolution rise. Verse 43, I hear there are those that will not touch anything dead for fear of making themselves unclean. Then I see dust on the books of the Zohar on my shelves. I see dust and ponder it, knowing it is the sediment of all unremembered life forms that have passed and come to stir in their minuteness. Verse 44, great and lofty adventures, journeys are exciting and freeing on the mind, but don't forget those that laid the cobblestone roads beneath thy feet. Verse 45, the past and the future can be, bared, can be compared to a bird's nest that was knocked out of a tree and is on the ground. Instead of the bird <clears throat> that the whole of the old nest is unsound, it rebuilds the nest with older straw from the down nest and newer grasses from the fields of life. And the bird makes the new nest even stronger so it does not fall again. So too is the fact that we can learn from our past experiences to shore up our futures even stronger. Verse 46, I once set out on some steps in the mid-morning and I noticed worms coming out of the dew-covered grass and crossing out to a foot, two-foot section and literally frying themselves on the concrete of the sidewalk. <coughs> I placed one back in the cool dew-covered grass and it made its way back to fry again on the, in the sun on the sidewalk. I believe that a mystic who cannot differentiate is like a worm crawling on the concrete. They are a danger unto themselves and possibly others, since they have not the self-preservation instinct to continue their own lives, and often they become a mild peculiarity unto observer. Verse 47. Caution is a contentious lover. 
When, a, when one is with her, she may not always be kind or loud, but when ignored, she becomes a danger. Verse 48. When one's consciousness expands to see multitudes of possibilities in the mysteries of life, you see it is that you are just now experienced the touch of the fringes of the outer garments of another. Verse 49. A peaceful water is tranquilizing to the spirit. Use caution unless the steady gaze absorbs you beyond yourself. Verse 50. When avoiding danger, avoid those that come bringing peace. For in a moment they shall have the group up in arms as a serpent frightens the chickens. Be aware of those that they say are sent by another. Verse 51. If a person tells you they heard a voice speaking with them and no one is there, be on guard. If a multitude hear say, this, say they hear the same voice, be prepared for battle. The voice one tends and needs to concern themselves about is to heed the voice that is within inside themselves. Verse 52. When a group costs more to each, other, each member that can be paid, the group dissolves in despair. When a nation spends more than its citizens can pay, expect change. And when change is not enough to fuel what some deem as a greater picture, expect war and decline into entropy. Verse 53. A baker bakes excellently loaves of bread that people then people want pies. Expectations are the things that when placed on others cause cooperation to come to an end. Verse 54. Never go out to hire a fishing vessel that has been tied to the docks for many years without the freedom of the sea. Likewise, never hire a warrior who has turned pacifist. They shall ru ruin the battle and breach the war. A non-combatant politician who has never been in physical combat will bring a strong nation to its knees. Verse 55. But a moment of a most minute fragment in the union of one's true nature stirs forth the ecstasy of one's great work. Verse 56. Groping in darkness is not a sign of failing or falling. It is a sign that life exists firstly in darkness until it can be shaped the darkness into material and tangible tools to bring the ways of those groping into a new perception. For truly, Darkness is the nurturing and comforting energy that causes all things to keep an outward motion of continuation run one fractal at a time. Verse 57. A long lifted, a long lifted overhead many times does not become lighter. It is the repetitious lifting that is shrinking the one lifting the law so that the weight seems lessened. Yet each person that may lift the law either has it harder, the same, or easier than the others. It is the act of becoming physically active that is the important denomination that counts. Verse 58. Where is the freedom of nations with whose liberties and whole liberties of laws and rules, those governments chain themselves down by their own motivation of control to the point where the fetters are often complemented as decorated in a high case system. Verse 59. When a person has placed themselves as a watch over the people, the person should understand when the people take no heed of them, for even, the, even there is clear and present danger some seek to choose the familiar ways of routine, never seeking to step forward out of their dreaming. Verse 60. There was once a miner that found an ancient bone. The archaeologist archeolog influenced him to bring it to the surface. 
Upon reaching the surface, the bone turned to dust, killing the scientist who inhaled it. Sometimes old bones need to stay behind and hidden in the occult caverns. Verse 61. The commerce of peoples, tongues, and nations played whoredoms. I say played whoredoms because they still, they still discriminate about the price. A true whore at the temple of life, knowing that the exposure of innocence is a lie, according to Liberal Belligus Aliester Crowley, the true temple prostitute knows no bounds and does not heckle the prices. Verse 62. Inflame thy spark, all consuming to burn away the dross of restrictive forces. The genius within is the aim. The goal of that aim is to be a blazing star on the heights beyond the abyss. Verse 63. What was, is. What is that, you ask? Nothing except what is in the futures of your present. What is present? It's not but yourself measuring out experiences of moments until that, that is, grasp is released in order for each to experience the acceptance of each being's future. Howsoever the two times or expressions of perception. Realities give no warning. Live and live is an experience only afforded to the living. Count yourselves in those estimations. So here you are. Now get busy. Gracias.